Hey everybody, welcome back to Drawbridge Finance. I'm super excited to have you guys here today because I've been thinking about this video in particular for a very long time because I'm gonna show you the secret on how to make money off of dividend paying stocks without ever buying stocks. And sometimes you can make way more than the dividend return. Now, I'm excited for another reason today, and that's because tomorrow's my 40th birthday. So there's a couple big things happening. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, um, I started investing when I was a teenager, and I knew that I was gonna be able to retire on my 40th birthday. And in fact, I was actually able to retire earlier this year. I quit my day job, which uh, I actually liked quite a bit, uh, but it took up a lot of my time. And so by retiring has given me a bit of free time to allow me to you know, explore other things that I've been enjoying like YouTube and make more money. I, can, I get to talk about finances all the time. And as well, I have another channel uh, dedicated to prop building, which is what I did for my career. So if you guys are new to this channel and you're interested in what I did for a living, because that was a super cool job, you should check out my other channel because I get to like build cool things. And right now, um, one of the things that's happening tomorrow for my 40th to celebrate is I'm gonna chop off this ridiculous beard. And now I know some of you are thinking, wow, that's crazy. You've had that beard for as long as I've known you. But that's not true. Some people have known me longer and I haven't had this beard the whole time. I've only been growing it out for about a year and a half. And I grew it out specifically for a video on my other channel. So I think you guys should check it out. Uh, it's a kind of a fun little video and you get to kind of see an insight into the other things that interest me in my life and what I'm gonna be spending more time doing now that I'm fully retired. Anyways, today's topic, uh, buying dividend stocks. Now, I know that lots of people, myself included, I own, I own a huge portfolio of dividend paying equities. And the, the thing about dividend paying equities is they're really, really simple. Once you buy a stock, then the dividend just pays out to you either quarterly, I have a lot of monthly ones, and you can just sit back and collect those dividends year after year, and it's a way of uh, slowly building your wealth over time. And it was actually my primary investment vehicle. Uh, now, the last five years, however, I've kind of switched over to options. And the reason that I've done that is because the option prices to, to trade them has come down. The markets are very, very tight. And most of the time when I run the math on it, the options just make more sense. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna show you a chart that shows you exactly how much money you would make by buying the, the stock relative to buying the options and the associated risk with doing the options trade rather than buying the stock outright. All right, everybody, I know that was a super long intro, but as always, I'm not a professional investor. I don't work in the finance industry. This is an opinion channel only, so you have to do your own research on stuff like this. But what I wanna do is show people that there's sometimes other ways to get into a stock position. So today I'm going to look at a really, really simple scenario. I'm gonna look at AT&T. So I'm gonna flip over to the chart for that. Now the stock has been, was down a little bit today and it's actually come up a little bit. Um, I did most of these numbers, uh, ran this chart this morning when the stock was trading at $38.09 and it's currently trading at 38.24. So it's come up a little bit since I, I ran the numbers on the chart this morning. But this is a big thing right here, the forward dividend yield. $2.04. So for, for those people that are new to dividend investing, the, essentially what happens is if you buy a share for $38.24 today, then over the course of the year, it's expected that AT&T is most likely going to pay $2.04 out to its shareholders. So for every $38 investment, you get back $2.04 in cash. Now this works out to 5.32% per year. And, th and this is where over time, this compounding can occur. I just wanna take a look at this chart and I've got it set to max here. So this is going back to the 1980s and let's just look at five years. So my chart is set up so that I have this purple line which is the 200 day moving average and it is you know, relatively flat. It has kind of a hump up here in the middle of 2018 and it's kind of down and it looks like the stock price, which are these candlestick charts, they're actually above the 20 day moving average, which is this green line, the 50 day moving average, and the 200 day moving average on this particular chart. Now, if you guys wanna learn how to set up these charts, I made a video a long time ago on how to set up Yahoo to finance charts. Uh, you should go check that out. I'll put a link down in the description below. I'll put a link at the end of this video so you can check out that video specifically because it shows you exactly how I have my charts set up. At this point in time, if just over $38, it actually doesn't look like a very good time to get into this stock. I would want to be buying when the stock was down here below these moving averages. But it doesn't mean that I couldn't 
enter a position now that could potentially make me some money. Say I was looking at this chart and thinking, wow, I wish that this chart was trading right in here at $36, right around these moving averages. That would be a much better entry point. Well, that's what we're gonna look at today. So I'm gonna, I've built a couple of spreadsheets. This one's called the Naked Put Option Profit Calculator. And it, this is gonna be available on my Etsy store as well it's, it's also going to be available to my patrons. So if you decide to sign up to be one of my patrons, you not only get to follow all of my trades, my option trades, my dividend trades, but you also get to download the file. So there's huge value in there. So you guys should check that out if you're interested at all. This chart normally has a lot more information on it. I'll do a separate video on the, the whole workings of this chart. But for today, we're just gonna concentrate on two things. I've put in some information at the top. I've got my trading account info, transaction fees. Now I've set this up for Americans because you guys are like, you can buy and sell options for free now. Your fees per contract are usually only a buck and your assignment fees are only $5. It's relatively inexpensive for you guys to trade options now. Now, not all accounts allow you to trade options. So you have to take that into consideration. This would be a play that only works in accounts that allow the selling of naked puts, which is what we're talking about today. The stock was trading at $38.09, so I plugged that information in. And then the short put strike that we're gonna choose is $36. That's the, the price I wanna pay for the stock, so that's what I've chosen. Now, the amount of premium that I can collect for that is 28 cents. Now, you're probably wondering, well, where do you get that information? Uh, let me try, uh, pull up one of my trading platforms. So what we're looking at is the AT&T calls and puts, and we're looking at them on a specific interval. So this is January 17th of, of 2020, 35 days from now. Here's the current stock price, 38.19. It's down 16 cents on the day. The strike prices are here in the middle. And I said we were looking at the 36 put. So the right side of this chart is, are the puts, the left side are the calls. And if we look at this 36 put right here, the current bid is 24 cents. Now again, I said I recorded this information earlier and I had recorded it at 28 cents when I entered this information. So I plugged in that 28 cents and then the days to expiration I've put in at 35. So this very first line that we're gonna look at, this row, is really simple. Selling one put contract controls 100 shares. If the, the share value was to drop, I would be forced to buy the shares at 36 bucks. That's what I'm agreeing to by selling that options contract. $36 times 100 shares works out to $3,600. You'll see in this line, it actually says 3,605. And the way that I get that calculation is because there's an assignment fee. That would be for, for selling one put contract. The income that I would make today from selling that contract would be $27. So I would collect that money and it would get deposited into my account today. So my total capital at risk would be the 3,605 minus the 27 that I collected today. So my total out of pocket would be 3,578. If the stock didn't drop below 36, then I just keep this $27 if the stock stays above that $36 mark. What that means is that I would collect over the next 35 days, I would collect around a 0.75% return, which works out to a 7.8% return. Now, I said before, AT&T pays a 5% return, 5.3%. That's based on buying the stock today at $38.09. So if we look at two different scenarios, we've got a scenario where somebody buys the shares for $38.09. The amount of dividend that they can collect over the year works out to 5.3%. But they can also make money on the stock appreciation. If that value of the stock goes up, they make money on that as well not so much with options. If the stock value goes up, the naked put that you've sold, the, the amount you collected is the maximum you can make on that. So the maximum I can make on this trade in this case is 7.8%. So comparatively to somebody that buys 100 shares, they would put out, be out of pocket 38.09. So look, quite a bit more money actually, $200 more out of pocket. They don't sell the option at all, they just collect the dividend. At the end of the year, if the stock price stays the same, they've collected 5.3% or their $2.04 per share. And that gets deposited in cash. Well, on this particular chart, it kind of shows you which ones are beneficial by highlighting in green. So basically what happens is you limit the amount of profit, but what we can do is we can consistently collect a little bit more than the actual dividend payout. I, I built a different spreadsheet specifically for this video to kind of illustrate this a little bit better. Again, same sort of thing. Here's the transaction fees, the current share value, 3809. Here's the dividend yield, $2.02. That would be if you bought shares. Here's the annual dividend yield in percentage is 5.3%. So that's, that's kind of what my target would be to beat. 
because all, if I wanted to just make 5.3%, all I would have to do is just buy the shares today and then collect the dividend. And that's a really easy thing to do. It's something I do. But I want to make a little bit bigger gain than that. So I'm looking at the options that are 35 days to expiration. And I'm gonna, I've, this time I've populated the whole option chain. So everywhere from $32 down to $47. And I want to see if there's a, a, like a sweet spot, if there's a place where I can make a better return than this 5.3%. Well, let's look at the $32 strike. The option's selling for only three cents. So the income that I would collect today is only $2. That doesn't even cover my $5 assignment fee. So my total risk would be only $3,200 because I'm agreeing to buy the stock at 32 bucks times 100 shares minus my $5 minus the $2 profit. So that's where I get this number, 3203. So the theoretical annual return, if I did that every 35 days, I would get $20.86 at the end of the year. The amount that I would collect, my return on investment for the amount risked versus the amount gained would be a, a maximum of 0.65%. I don't wanna do a trade every 35 days that the maximum I can gain is 0.65%. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But there's a really high probability that I would be successful. 97% of the trades that I would make would make money in this case if I did that. So what we do is we want to find a spot where we still have a high probability of profit, but we're collecting enough of a premium to actually make it worthwhile. Now, normally we would do this in what's called a high IV environment. Now, the, high, the IV environment on AT&T is really low. It's actually only a 10 right now is the IV rank. It's in the 10% of the year that is the least volatile. Now, this could change at any time, but AT&T, the, the reason that I'm choosing this stock is because it's not really volatile anyways. It doesn't, doesn't move around a huge amount, and it's why a lot of people use it as a dividend play. So let's just look down here at $35. Now, the $35 strike, we would be uh, investing $3,500 minus the premium collected, minus the $5 assignment fee, and so the, the total risk allocated would be $3,400. The theoretical return, if you did this every 35 days, would be 166 bucks. Well, now we're getting into substantial numbers. We $3,500 makes 166 bucks a year. That's not so bad. That's a 4.78% return. And it's got an 87% chance of making that money. That's a really high percentage return. But not necessarily that great because I'm still only collecting 4.78%. Now remember, the dividend is 5.3%. So let's look at this next one, 36, which happens to be the one that I showed you guys earlier. So collecting 28 cents, so the income today would be $27. $3,578 investment would be returning $281.57. That's a 7.87% return. And it's got almost an 80% probability of profit. Now that is looking pretty sweet to me. Now, if I wanted to be even more aggressive, if I thought that AT&T was really gonna have like a big run this month and I was super confident that it wasn't gonna go down or I really, really wanted to buy the stocks and I just didn't wanna pay the $38 that they're trading for right now, I could put in a trade at 37 or 38. Both these strikes are below the current valuation, but I'd be collecting either 52 cents or 94 cents, which would give me the $51 or $93. Over the year, if you did this, if the stock stayed above 37 bucks, at the end of the year, I could collect $531 or 14.56% return. And I have a 65% chance of this, this happening. So as you go down this chart, the, the, the chances get lower of the stock being up at that price. For example, if we look way down at the bottom, $47, according to the delta value of this strike, there's a 0% chance that at and stock is gonna be trading above $47 in the next 35 days. You would collect a huge amount of premium for it. You collect $924, which means your cost basis of buying 100 shares would only be $37.81. That's still less than the cost of just buying them outright today for $38.09 times 100. And if you did that every single month, if the stock went up repeatedly, went from 39, went up that you know $9 gap every single month, then you could in theory make 254% a year. But there's a 0% chance of that. So that's kind of how options work in general. Now let's just take a look at like what would happen if we bought shares. If we sold the, the option for 42, we collected $434 we would be out of pocket a total of $3,771. Now, if the stock value went up to $42, the person that owned the shares, you'd actually make a very similar gain. It's crazy, but the because this $434 
gets rebated to you in cash, you actually are out of pocket less money than the person that bought the shares for 3809 here and let the price go up to $42 as well. The total return annually works out to 112%, whereas the person that sold the puts would actually have 120% return annually. And interestingly enough, you can even go further out in time with options. If we go back to that options chart, let's just look at the next month. What if we didn't do January, but if we went to February? So now we've got new option prices and we'll look at that 36 again. It's trading at 64 cents. And again, I populated this chart earlier. So this is 70 days to expiration, this side of the chart. Here's the price, 66 cents. So the income $65. Well that, if you repeated it every single month, would actually gain a 9.57% return. That's nearly double the amount of the, the current dividend yield. Now, of course, the big thing here is if, if as an investor, I really thought that AT&T was going to go like skyrocketing up this year, it would be smarter for me to just buy the shares outright and own them. I would make that capital gains. It would be very easy trade for me to do. But if I think that AT&T is just going to trade in a range and I don't really want to pay that 3809 for it today, I want to get a better deal. I can sell this put for 36 bucks, collect 65 bucks today in cash, and theoretically, I can make 338 bucks over the year and I make a 9.57% return without ever buying the shares at all. So in this case with AT&T, looking at the numbers, the options selling the puts makes a better return in almost all cases at, compared to buying the, the uh, shares outright. And it's amazing how this math works. And it's, it's why when I hear people say like options are risky, I just shake my head because they, they're absolutely not. I mean, this one, this chart clearly shows that I'm lessening the risk on the exact same underlying and potentially getting a better, bigger return. And I have a very high probability of success. Like in this case, if we look at the 36, the probability is lower, but still 70% chance of making this 9.57% return. And if, if it doesn't go, if the stock goes down, all I did was buy the shares for 36 bucks instead of the $38 that they're here to, they're trading for today. So I got a deal both ways. Anyways, that is why I love options. It's one of the things that I'm really trying to get into on my channel. And I hope you guys stick around. I hope you decide to click that subscribe button because I want us all to get rich together. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you very soon.